Thank you for checking out this no spoilers movie review. This is for the 1996 werewolf film Bad Moon, which I'm sure people will be able to just figure it out based off the title, Bad Moon. And actually the cover art, the poster art, whatever you want to call it, looks really good. It's kind of like a really cool looking drawn werewolf face with one of its eyes being a full moon, which that kind of drew me in. Plus the fact that I like werewolf films. I think that werewolves are vastly underutilized in a genre where we're focusing very heavily at least for a while on vampires we st you still see a good amount of vampire stuff here and there but unbelievably focusing on things like zombies uh have for a while and still doing it um i just feel like werewolves are a little uh underserved and, and i would like to see it a lot more so before watching this film i started thinking to myself why is it that we don't see more werewolf films and i was like why is it why is it and it dawned on me it's got to be because it's more expensive than doing something like a, a vampire or a zombie or, you know, something else. Because if you think about it, in order to have a successful werewolf film, the werewolf itself has to look good. Now, you can go the CGI route and do it totally CGI, but that doesn't really hold up all that well. Plus, I feel like you'd have to have a really good CGI team to pull that off to the degree that people would be looking for. Um, so the, the best way to go is practical effects, to, to make an actual suit with a nice you know, mask or animatronic head, which in this film, Bad Moon, they actually used an animatronic head that looks really good. Um, so pricey, money, it's more expensive. So that's, the, that's what I came up with. That's what makes the most sense to me. But out there, put some comments down here. Let me know, do you think that that's valid? Uh, do you have another idea or do you know for sure? Let me know. Anyway, let's get into uh, Bad Moon from 1996 by Eric Red, which people say, who is Eric Red? Well, Eric Red is the person who directed this film and was involved a bit in the screenplay. Um, hasn't done like anything else pretty much. And you'll, you might know why. If you've seen Bad Moon, you might know why. So uh, got my, you know, Sorry, I got my notes on my phone. Jesus. <laughs> I got my notes on my phone, so I'll be going through in the order as usual as I was watching, as things occurred to me. So, uh, director Eric Red, he, so he isn't known for a whole lot, actually, but he did write the script for the 1986 version of the movie The Hitcher. Yes, the one with C. Thomas Howell and Rucker Hauer, which is a good watch. It's a fun film. I would definitely recommend that. So after seeing Bad Moon, I would say that Eric Red's best achievement in film is still The Hitcher from 1986. Uh, check that out if you haven't seen it. So this is apparently based on a novel by Wayne Smith, and the name of the novel is called Thor. Now Thor is a dog in the film, and apparently the movie shifted focus, literally, um, well, perspective mainly, uh, from what the book did. The book was actually from the perspective mainly of the dog whose name is Thor. And so one of the issues that I see in this film is that that kind of shift. It's one of these things, kind of like um, with Josh Mallerman's Bird Box book, then when it went to the movie on Netflix, uh, that, that movie was about, well, the book was about someone who couldn't really use their sight. And so in the book, as you're reading from the perspective of someone who can't use their sight, it's very effective. You also have no sight in that sense. But then when you take that story and you put it in a visual medium, then you lose a lot. It just doesn't work the same. And so I think it's the same thing with this, where I guarantee the book is a lot better than the film. It's probably one of those things where you lose a lot going from the perspective of the dog to going from really perspective of no one. I mean, it's kind of like an outsider's watching as an audience member. You're just watching what these people are doing. There's not a whole lot of perspective at all in this. It's just observation, really. Um, I mean, the dog is heavily featured, and they try to focus as much as they can on the dog, but the problem is it's a real dog. It's not CGI or anything. You can't make the dog do certain things. Also, how on film are you supposed to, like, really have a dog's perspective other when other other than doing like a low to the ground POV shot with a camera, you know, you can't get the dog's thoughts or anything like that. And if someone could pull that off, hats off to them. That'd be amazing. So I just feel like, you know, maybe in the beginning, this wasn't the novel to choose to make a movie out of. It just does not translate. So you'll, you know, my opinion now on this, I, I think this movie sucks. It's not good. I'll just tell you that right now. 
So it didn't do well in theaters either when it came out, and it lost, it lost $6 million. So from what it made in the box office to what the budget was, $6 million in between there in that gap. Not good. So you can see why maybe Eric Red isn't very well known, because maybe he didn't get much work after that. Yeah. Um, so within this film, when it first starts off, they, they immediately go for the sex and the gore. And that's, that's a trick that a lot of filmmakers will use to be like, grab people, pull them in, start exciting, get them the stuff that you know they're there for, for the sex appeal, for the gore, for the scares, you know, for the creature. And and that's the thing is you, you get all this stuff like immediately and it's great. And that set me up. I was like, okay, here we go. But then they significantly back down from that for a very long amount of time. And those types of scenes are very far and few, are few and far between. Sorry, I just came from work. Uh, they're very few and far between. And then it just really becomes a slog watching this film. Because when you start with such, such awesome expectations like they did, and they show you the werewolf early on, and it looks great. Like the actual bodysuit portion of it is okay, but the face, the animatronic head looks so good. That's what I'm saying. Like practical effects, just awesome. And so like that set it up. I was like, all right, I'm ready for this. And then it's just, it's a slog. And I'll talk a little bit more about why. So one of the characters in this is one of the key characters is unbelievably suspicious immediately in the film, stays suspicious, has a lot of uh, behaviors and actions that just are over the top for what someone in that situation would be doing and trying to act. And it's just, it doesn't feel natural for the story, and it's just, it doesn't work. It just does not work, in my opinion. I think it's it's poorly done. Um, like I said, the animatronic will face, werewolf face, great. There's no subtext in this film whatsoever. What you are seeing is literally what you're getting on the screen. And I really, really hate these types of films. It's like you're just spoon-feeding the audience. You're saying, here you go, idiot. You just like film, any film, right? You don't need to think about it. You don't want a good story. Just eat it. Eat it, shut up, and be happy. And I just hate films like this. you got to have at least some subtext. Like, give me some underlying story. Give me some underlying, like, real theme or fun theme or interesting thing. Give me something. And this film gives you nothing. It gives you nothing. And it leaves you regretting your choice of watching it, in my opinion. Although I know, I guarantee there's going to be someone out there who will comment down here and be like, actually, I really have fond memories of this film. I saw it when I was young, or I watched it recently, and I still like it for some reason. Uh, and that's fine. You know, obviously, this is just my opinion. I hate it personally. It does not do anything for me. But if it if it does for you, that's, that's great. Uh, the acting sucks, and the dialogue doesn't help at all. So it's one of those situations where it's hard to find, it's hard to figure out, is the actor not good, or are all the actors in this instance not good, or is it a situation where they would do a fine job except the dialogue is so poorly written that they just can't deliver it properly because it's just poorly written? Or is it a situation where, you know, they're bad actors, or is it a combination of the two? I would assume it's a little bit of a combination of the two, where the actors are just, you know, okay actors, and if you give them the right material, they could do a pretty good job, but the material was bad too, so it just all comes out, blech. So it makes it for some really cringy dialogue, like the dialogue is garbage, it is so bad, it's so bad. So there's a standoff of sorts in this film. Uh, between two characters and it is ridiculously long nothing is happening and you're really just sitting there like we're still doing this right now like we're not gonna move the film at all and that's the thing like this movie is a slog it just goes at this snail's pace and there's never payoff and it's just it's like they were just trying to hit a certain runtime of the film, and they're just like, "Oh man, yeah, we gotta take some, we gotta do some long scenes here because otherwise, otherwise we're not gonna hit our quota for runtime." <laughs> Ridiculous. So the the set feels really confined though, and this is weird. Like I like confined sets sometimes, but when it feels like it should be confined, in this instance, there's a lot of outdoor portions, but it feels confined, and it's a bad thing in this instance because you're 
unrealistically keeping the characters within this small space that's outdoors and it doesn't make any sense like these people can easily go elsewhere and they would go elsewhere and they should go elsewhere but they're staying around this little area which leads you to believe that they had a very small set or they were just doing it because of cost i don't know or it actually looks at um, at certain times it looks like maybe it's real or maybe it's on a sound stage i don't know so it could have really been a situation where it was a set on a sound stage and they were just like we just have like this one these one or two set sets and that's all we got that's all that's in the budget so we just got to work with that keep it small uh it does not do any service to the to the film and uh yeah the story suffers greatly for it and the characters what they where they can do what they can do is severely limited which just kills a lot of what feels real because it doesn't feel real um, I could, like I said before, I could see where the book is probably good. The The idea behind the book, as I did research on it, sounds like it could be a really good book. So I would recommend reading the Bad Moon book. I don't recommend seeing this movie, obviously, as you can tell. Um, so there are changes in attitude of one of the key characters in this film. And it's actually the same character that's a acting a, a very suspicious way. Um, and, and it, there doesn't seem to be a real catalyst for it or a real reason for it. It's just kind of towards the end ish. There's just like this switch that goes off and it's like, this person's all of a sudden acting very different and very weird. And it doesn't make any sense. Like, and, and, and I mean, to be honest, like characters don't make sense in this film at all. Like their motivations are unbelievably one dimensional. Um, it, there's no depth. It's just garbage. It, it's trash um i do have to say one thing i kind of laughed at that i thought was cool was in the background being a werewolf movie they had a coors light can at one point the silver bullet as we all know so i was like haha someone's got a sense of humor that's kind of funny i like that um and the, and the this is this is the biggest thing for me inevitably a lot of these werewolf films will want to show you a transformation i feel like when you do a werewolf film, there's this expectation that you know the audience has that they got to see the transformation. So you can't just do the, oh, he changes off, he or she changes off screen, and then out oh, pops up and they're the werewolf because people will be really pissed at that. But what's worse is when your transformation scene looks terrible. And this one is just, it's bad. So I laughed out loud when the transformation was happening. And just think about, like, what effects looked like in 1996 in film, and you'll probably get an idea of, of what was going on in this. And the transformation is just, it's laughable. It's unbelievably laughable. Like I said, I laughed out loud, and I was watching this film by myself, and it takes a lot for me to laugh when I'm on my own. I, I mainly only laugh in, like, social settings, out loud, that is. Like, internally, I'll laugh in my head, but... I laughed out loud. It caught me off guard. It was so bad, and it is laugh-inducing. So I guess if you really want to know what this is all about, at least just pull up the movie and then just, like, fast-forward to just the transformation scene and check that out and how bad it is. So the last thing I had written is something I kind of already covered, that, you know, some stories just don't translate to film. And that is 100% the situation with this film. The source material, like I said, is probably a good book. It probably works really well, but they should have realized that when they were going to write the screenplay, this does not translate to the screen. You cannot do it from a dog's perspective and have it work. And the whole point of the story sounds like it's from the dog's perspective. When I read a little bit of the synopsis of it, I understand that the story is specifically for a dog's perspective, and that's why it works. And so for them to take that out of it and just be like, I mean, the dog's here, but there's no perspective, it doesn't work at all. It bombs. So uh, giving this a rating out of five stars with half stars in play, one. This is a one-star film. And the reason I'm even going to give it one star instead of a half, and I don't give zero stars. I, I don't do that. Half is the lowest. So, uh, cause you get a half just for effort. <laughs> so, uh, the reason I gave it that extra half for a one star is because the werewolf looks good. And that very first scene of, you know, the sex and the gore is a really good scene that really, you know, sets the stage, but it's just a crazy disappointment after that. So, uh, one star on this one, it is bad. Uh, but please, please put your comments down here. What are your feelings? Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? It's fine either way. 
I am totally good with it. But for me personally, trash. It shouldn't be called Bad Moon. It should just be called Bad Movie because it is a bad movie. Anyway, you you killed my hopes and dreams. I really went into this film like excited because I'm like, I haven't seen this one. And it's a werewolf movie. And I really like werewolves. So I'm excited. And then me after the film was a very different me. A very sad me. Terrible. Anyway, thank you everyone for checking this out. Please do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe button. It literally takes you a second and is very painless, uh, uh, unlike watching this movie. So pay me back at least for watching this movie, which was painless. <laughs> Give me that subscribe. I really appreciate it. You can do some thumbs ups and whatnot. Uh, but thank you so much. And until next time, keep it brutal.